Welcome to Coffee with the Mayor. I'm Deb Vitrelli, and we are broadcasting live from the top of Tampa Bay in beautiful downtown Oldsmar with our host, Oldsmar Mayor Eric Seidel. These segments are featured each Wednesday following an Oldsmar City Council meeting for the community. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. How are you? I'm probably more rested than you. <laughs> I am. Hey, I right out of the bat, everybody who is watching this, I want you to protest that we only have one camera now <laughs> and that Deb has found a way to stay off camera. And uh, I want you to uh, post that uh, you want to see Deb. So I'm going to get that out there right away. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. So we, before we begin, we encourage our viewing audience to submit any questions they may have during this segment by commenting on our Facebook live feed. And of course, we will do our best to try to get those answers for you. And just in case we don't, you can always email Mayor Seidel at eseidel at myoldsmar.com regarding anything we discuss today. Coffee with the Mayor was developed by you to keep our residents, businesses, and community partners informed on highlights from last night's council meeting. Were there any interesting comments during Citizens Open Forum? Well, there there always are. Of course. But the uh, Citizens Forum was really, really brief last night. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had uh, the Salvation Army came up and made a little presentation. It was nice. That's nice. And then uh, the chamber talked about the second Friday that got canceled oh. because of the rain. Um, that was a tough call to make. And no then, doubt. of course, I think after they canceled it, it cleared up. Oh, wow, later, really? <laughs> In Murphy's Law, right? That's the way it works. But it was pretty quiet on the Citizens Open Forum. Oh, cool. So uh, a public hearing for the first reading of Ordinance 2021-24 was held to amend a section of the Land Development Code in the town center to utilize public right-of-way for outdoor dining accommodations. Did this pass the first reading? It did. It did, and I, I, I think they're, you know, passed unanimously. And some will remember that we initiated this during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It's really where it kind of grew out of uh, citywide originally. And the intent was to help restaurants get some outdoor dining in the right-of-way. And, of course, there's some public right-of-ways that we own as a city and within the CRA. And so there's really no been no mechanism to where 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 it was successful and where we thought it made sense to keep it sure uh there was no mechanism in place really to make it permanent and so that's what that ordinance will give us the ability to do that uh, under certain conditions wonderful yeah moving forward so a public hearing for the first reading of ordinance 2021-25 was held to amend the comprehensive plan of the city of oldsmar This would encourage mixed-use development within the area of Oldsmar, labeled the CRD, which is the Community Redevelopment District, as a land-use category. Did this pass the first reading? It did. It passed 4-1. Okay. Uh, That was, uh, I thought, a really good public hearing. Uh, It was a long public hearing, similar to the uh, last meeting we had. There's a difference from the last meeting where it was a discussion about should we move it forward and have a hearing. Right. And so that discussion happened in the Citizens Open Forum. Well, since it was a public hearing, we have a certain format we follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Ordinance 2021-25, 2021-26, they're pretty much related to each other. Okay. And so, um, but the ordinance, as you said, it has to do with increasing the density, uh, specifically in a part of the CRA, which is along Tampa Road, and really limited... Uh, to the city hall property. Right. It, it goes a little bit past that, but that where it goes a little bit further is already developed. It's like uh, where the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings is at and that kind of place right mm-hmm. in there. So it doesn't really impact that area because it's done. Right. But it allows us to increase the density under a specific type of building, uh, which is, as you said, vertically integrated mixed use. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what is vertically integrated mixed use? It's, it's a single building which accommodates multiple land uses. And generally speaking, it's intended to have the more active users on the bottom, like retail. Sure. And then on top of it, it's more passive where it's residential or it might be office space. Uh, and so in this case, the discussion really centered around having residential and it's a more common practice that's used now. Um, and the, the county allows up to 90 units per acre wow. with that designation. Our, our code allows, our zoning allows currently for 30. And so and it, it, it hasn't been updated in a while. And so the proposal is to change it to 65. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And so there's a, a lot of uh, benefit to it. But as it relates to what transpired at the meeting, the staff made a presentation. And I encourage everyone to go watch it uh, because it, it was probably about two hours long. 20 minutes of that was Mayor Beaverlin. Oh. Uh, <laughs> he does, you know, the I love the mayor. Uh, and he doesn't come out and speak very often, but he's not real big on the five minute rule. <laughs> and so, um, and I just, I'm not going to cut him off. I can't no, do it. Yeah. I, I can't do it. So, in any event, <laughs> so uh, the result of the public hearings were mixed overall. Most people spoke in favor of it for those who keep track of it. Uh, but, you know, it kind of follows along this. Folks who live near here are worried about the increase in traffic. Uh, you know, what uh, what could be built? Um, does it still keep that small town charm? And whether or not they like the design yeah. of that type of uh, mixed use, the vertically integrated. And so that was what you will hear a lot about. And those who were in favor talked a lot about the need for having more people downtown to support the proposed or uh, ultimate new retail businesses. You know, we've had issues where the retail businesses that we have opened on State Street have failed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so there was a lot of discussion around that um, from those who were in favor of it. And many of them just really like that kind of design. I, I don't think it's a secret. It certainly should be. You know, we have a possible proposal. We don't have it in final format yet uh, from Woodfield. Uh, and it's out there. It's go to the website, you know, uh, the city's website. Uh, click on the transparency link and also the government link. I think it's under both of those links where it talks about what's happening downtown. Uh, the city staff's done a great job of putting all the information up there. I mean, really, it's, I've heard a lot of positive feedback. And that was really I think came out of the citizens getting uh, involved and saying, hey, we don't know enough about this. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys got to communicate this better. And uh, clearly, if, if the word doesn't get out, then we have to. Yeah. And so, but the, but so that was kind of the pro and the con. And then the council gets into its discussion. And I think they were more focused on the benefits of vertically integrated mixed use. I mean, that was really their discussion. Everyone varied a little bit on their talk track. Uh, You know, it increases the the residential population uh, versus purely commercial boxes when you're doing it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, It, it, you know, we don't have that type of product uh, housing wise. So high end apartments, which is predominantly what you find in that type of uh, building. Yeah. uh, we, We don't really have them right now or we have very limited amount of it in Oldsmar. Um. So, it, in a, of course, it, it, most people don't realize it, but even though it might have higher density, uh, it actually has um, a smaller impact on the envi- uh, environment because it's a smaller footprint overall for a lot more purposes. And so a lot of people spoke about that. And, of course, you know, a big discussion was about the failure of, of past attempts to start a downtown. We've, uh, we've tried seven or eight times, mm-hmm. it's failed, and they kind of fall into two camps. Our efforts have been either the city has said, hey, we're going to go do it ourselves. And, of course, the downside to that is um, it's expensive. So we have to pay for the infrastructure, putting meaning the roads and platting it and, you know, water, sewage, uh, storm drainage, that kind of stuff. And then you have to have a parking garage because there's nowhere to park. Yeah. Um, and so when you add that up, it would be a, a, a cost to the taxpayers of, I don't know, most conservatively would say 15 to $18 million to do all that. The other way we've attempted this is with a master developer. And there's some trade-off, right? Uh, with the master developer, they own it. Now, we can control what goes there through a development agreement, right? And so, but they generally end up paying for a large part of the infrastructure. If you increase the density, it means they have more value in the property and you can require them to pay more of the infrastructure, right? Yeah. And so that was a big part of the discussion last night, Um and so at the end of the day, I, I, it, you know, it passed. Uh, the next steps, it goes to the county. 
even though it hasn't had two readings, it goes to the county um, after our first reading where it passed last night. So the county, because it's an amendment to their comprehensive plan, it goes to them. They take public comments. Uh, it then will ultimately, if it, if it passes there, will go to the state. And if it passes there, then it comes back to us and gets calendar for the second and what would be the final public hearing. Okay. And so that's where it stands right now. But I really want to make a, a point of thanking everyone who came out last night, whether you're in favor of it or you're opposed to it. The, the feedback is valuable. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's gotten a lot of people involved. So it's uh, it was a good thing. Yeah, it's it was a good, good thing. to see the community really, you know. Yeah, they're passionate yeah, about it. Yeah, very. As they should be. Yeah. You know. But I encourage people to go listen to it for yourselves because uh, the mayor tries to summarize the best he can <laughs> and tell all sides of the story. Um, but it passed four one. Good. Okay. So, uh, as you mentioned, kind of, you know, another public hearing for the first reading of Ordinance 20-21-26 was held to amend Part 4 of the Town Center Development Code and Appendix A of the Architectural and Design Pattern Book. So this would encourage mixed use development, what's called the TCCR, which is Town Center Commercial Residential Zoning District, and allow density bonus for vertically integrating uh, within the zone. So... As you mentioned, yeah, that those two were well. really together, kind yeah, of, yeah, pretty yeah. much in a nutshell. Yeah, they <laughs> passed the same way, and and so the even the conversation around it. No. While we didn't take them together, yeah, you have to take them separately because you have to go through the Snyder hearing process. Yes, but there were no comments when we read the second one. I mean, everybody was commented out. Yeah, no doubt. And they were, <laughs> there's another late meeting. So <laughs> yeah, there's a, a few other public hearings were held. Uh, one was to approve the Douglas Road commercial plat, mm-hmm. and that was approved. That was approved. It was uh, it was in a Snyder hearing. Oh, which you know, this is a good opportunity to kind of explain Snyder hearings and some of the because we break into different ways we do things, yeah. right? And so, a Snyder hearing is a quasi judicial um, proceeding, which means that that term essentially means uh, it gives partial judicial characters to that board. So they have the ability to approve a change to something on a very limited scope uh, that might otherwise you would have to have changed by a court or, or, or some other body. The Supreme Court years ago gave cities the ability to make those changes locally. A great example, and this is what we did last night with the next two items, mm-hmm. um, where we changed the plats, uh, where we changed the lots and combined them, right? Okay. So think of it this way. Uh, like the one over on Douglas, I think it was four lots that are side by side. They're in a commercial area where they can be developed. And whoever originally uh, purchased that land envisioned selling four different lots. Oh, So they platted them that way. They're recorded at the county. Now they come back years later and say, I'm going to do one big commercial thing there. I think it's a pool supply company is going over there. Okay. Over on Tampa Road. And um, I need to combine those lots into one. So where do I get the permission to do that? You don't have to go to the court. You can come to the city council because we have that authority via a Snyder hearing. And when you send in a Snyder hearing, another example is our uh, Board of Adjustments. Oh, yeah. Right? So they, they sit... And they actually, most people don't know this, but the Board of Adjustments has authority over council decisions. It's the only appointed board in the city that can overrule or or can change something that the council can't participate in. Normally, that would be our our code. uh, You want to build a pool and you're lots of funny shape. (laughs) <laughs> and you you know so you don't you can't get that full seven foot setback so maybe you need five feet instead well instead of you going through a lengthy expensive process you can go to the board of adjustments and they sit in a um, quasi judicial manner almost like they're judges and jury right and so um so that's how that worked interesting i never knew that about that board yeah yeah, and, it, you know, it, it's smart. It's a good way for citizens to be able to manage stuff themselves and yeah. keep their costs low and 
all that other good stuff. So we had a couple of them last night. We had one over on St. Pete Drive uh, with a commercial plowed over there. And so... Um, oh, Crescent Library. Yeah. The, one's up already. Yeah, almost it, done. Yeah, right. So the Canner Building that you'll yes. see the name on, I think it looks great. It does. They did a nice job with that. Well, they're yeah. going to build a second one. Similar, so, yeah. I would think. Yeah, yeah. and there's some stuff. Yeah, there's, there's two of them. There's the one they're building, and they have a future one. And so they had some changes that they needed made. And, and so it's a... I won't say it's a housekeeping thing, but it's pretty close to a housekeeping nice. process. It's good to learn that. There you go. Now you know what a yeah, slider hearing is. Did you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I learned this the hard way because I was on the Board of Adjustments. Oh. I thought I was doing a really good job. And I like saw <laughs> something that was on the agenda. So I drove out there to take a look at it in preparation. And I was speaking like I was so intelligent. And I said, well, I went out there and looked at it, and you know, blah, 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 blah. And then the city attorney looked at me and said, um, did you take notes? I'm like, what? He said, you've got to remember, in a Snyder hearing, all of your peers must have the same information you have, just like uh, a jury would because you're sitting in judgment. Yeah. And i like, uh, no, but I remember it all. You know? <laughs> so I, I learned the hard way, but uh, so... That's one of the conditions of a Snyder hearing. We yeah. all have to have the same information. Cool. Yes. Oh, the city manager requested approval and authorization to execute a change order to provide professional engineering services for the design and construction services of the wastewater reclamation facility. And so was this request approved? It was. Oh, nice. It was. Uh, you know, it's for the design work, as you mentioned, are... Yeah. Um, Wastewater and reclamation facility uh, we've had for quite some time. And this really has to do with the aeration system. Mm -hmm. And so we knew, you know that those have to be rebuilt every so often. And so this starts that process. It's an expensive process. But it has to do with, in particular, the blowers is a, a big part of it. And it's essentially a function of, uh, the wastewater treatment biological process. Yeah. Uh, uh, it infuses oxygen into the wastewater at specific points. Oh, that's important. And I start talking yeah. about the breakdown of organic matter, man, matter and everybody's going to say, I don't want any more coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to go any further than that. Plus, <laughs> we know what that plant does, yeah. <laughs> plus, at, at some point, I'm going to be like, Staring at notes because um, we have experts who do that kind of thing. But yeah, it was approved, and you know that's these are the detailed things that the council gets really involved in because of a budgeting process. I mean, sure. this was a topic yeah. that we had at great length at the budget meeting uh, that we recently had because it's in the millions, and because costs of things are going up like crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, we found out that the cost of ultimately doing these uh, rebuild have already gone up from what we budgeted. Oh, wow. And so it's important to get those things done in a real timely manner. And uh, that's what we were doing. Wonderful. Were yeah. there any other key items or actions from the council meeting or announcements? Uh, no, I mean, we no? mostly the entire meeting really, it's funny. I was joking before we got on the air. It was a very long meeting. I think we got finished at after 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. which is for us a, a long meeting. Uh, but it was not a lot of things on the agenda. You know, it was really dedicated to the density issue and yeah. uh, getting that uh, uh, discussed and, and ultimately uh, it well, did pass. So. Well, you mentioned about the website, and I just want to throw this out, is we do have a URL for that, so it's easier to find. It redirects to that page, and that's downtownoldsmar.com. Thank so, you. You're welcome. Thank so, you. Yeah. And that is downtownolsmar.com. Thank you. <laughs> and who, who works on that? I think you do, don't I, you? I do. Felicia helped as well, yes. Yeah, so it was great. Uh, there's great information. I want to, I once again, just thank everybody who came out last night. I think uh, the involvement is terrific. Uh, I'm excited about uh, getting more information out. By the way, on that website, there's a place where you can ask questions and it will later appear answered on the Frequently Asked Questions. Yes. So go here. The information's factual, and it's going to be constantly updated. So Definitely. Uh, but you know what I just realized? Oh. 
I'm out of coffee. Oh, my. Yeah, no questions here. So, hey, that's so not good. So it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Mark, behind the scenes, and Deb. No problem. Thank and, you. And uh, we thank all the citizens for listening. I hope you learned something or got some information, but you can watch the whole meeting online. Have a great day.